Hey, hey, what's up, guys? It's Jordan with the Laundromat Resource Podcast. This is show 65. And I'll pump you here today because today we are being joined from Puerto Rico uh, from our friend Luis Alicea, uh, who is bringing the heat. He's bringing the knowledge today. It is an awesome, awesome interview. Tons and tons of knowledge in this one. You're going to love it. Cannot wait. And very cool to have somebody who's out there in Puerto Rico uh, running a laundromat out there and a whole laundry business. So pretty awesome episode. You're going to love it. Stay tuned for that. Real quick before we jump into it, uh, I want to just take a second to remind you there's a lot going on on the forums all the time. Uh, People are joining up over there. I can't believe how many people are joining uh, over at laundromatresource.com. If you have not done that yet, head over to laundromatresource.com, join. We have a a free membership and a pro membership over there. And uh, man, it's awesome uh, just how that community is growing and how much knowledge is being dropped over there. Very, very cool. Um, Obviously, we're adding stuff all the time between different podcast episodes, a blog post every Thursday coming out. Uh, You know, We got a live Q&A uh, happening with Dave Laundromat Millionaire Men's this week. That's July 28th uh, at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Uh, if you're on the uh, quote unquote beast coast over there, uh, that's on Thursday, July 28th. This 2021. If you're listening to this when it's coming out, uh, come join us over there. There's a link in the show notes, which will be at laundromatresource.com slash show 65. Um, If you're on YouTube, the link will be down below. So make sure you uh, click that link and set a reminder to join us on Wednesday. Thursday, those of you guys who missed our uh, webinar last week with uh, Mike Kelly's Atmosphere TV, you're in luck because we're actually, we had some difficulties and we had to push it out a week and we're doing it this week instead. Thursday, we do a free live webinar every Thursday. And this week we're being joined by Atmosphere TV's Mike Kelly. So many of us have been switching uh, off of cable and going over to Atmosphere TV and enjoying all the benefits of it over there. And if you have not yet jumped on that bandwagon, first of all, just do it. I have a link down below. That's an affiliate link we partner with uh, with Atmosphere TV, but you don't have to use it. You can just Google Atmosphere TV also. It does not matter to me, but I would love, love, love for you guys to at least check it out. And if you want to uh, see it a little bit more and ask some questions uh, for, uh, to me and Mike on Thursday, that's at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. East Coast time. Uh, come join us over there. You can sign up at laundromatresource.com right at the top of the page there. So obviously, we've got a lot of information that's coming out all the time between our different platforms, but also so many of you guys have been joining in conversations in the forums and adding a ton of value over there. Go be a part of that. Add your own value, ask your own questions, do it every week and make sure, make sure, make sure you go over to the new members introduction forum and, uh, go introduce yourself over there because cool stuff is happening when people are introducing them introducing themselves on the forum over there. All right. I got a little bit of a cold. I don't, I'm sure you can hear that. Sorry. Um, but uh, so, so excited today to be talking with Luis. Uh, and let's, let's jump into it with them right after this message about Atmosphere TV. And again, come join us on that webinar. If you're listening to this past uh, the webinar date. You can listen to that webinar, every other webinar we've had. Um, when you join the pro membership, you have access to every webinar we've ever done. So make sure that you come join us over there uh, on the pro membership. All right, guys. Right after this, we'll jump into it with Luis. All right, guys. Today's episode is brought to you by Atmosphere TV. You may remember back in episode 34 when Atmosphere TV's Mike Kelly joined me on the podcast. It was an epic, epic episode. If you haven't listened to it, 
show 34, lawnmatresource.com slash show 34. Go check it out. It's incredible. A ton of value there. One of the things we talked about is just the importance of creating a good positive atmosphere in your laundromat. And I was just rereading the book by Simon Sinek, Start With Why. And one of the things that really stands out to me is that people don't make purchase decisions based on, you know, the logic of, you know, any decision that they're making to spend their money. It's more based on a feeling and an association. And so it's really important to uh, create a positive feeling, a positive atmosphere, no pun intended, uh, in your laundromat to help people associate this chore that most people don't like doing with something positive. Atmosphere TV is an incredible way to help improve the atmosphere of your laundromat. And basically, if you haven't heard of it, what it is, is it has 50 plus channels uh, created specifically for businesses with everything from uh, sports clips, hilarious fail videos, draw dropping videos from all over the world. There's automobile channels. Uh, there's a ton of stuff. My kids love, love, love it. And my customers love it. Atmosphere TV could be a great way to either supplement your cable or a lot of us laundromat owners are cutting our cable bill completely and running Atmosphere TV. They're designed to be used with no audio Audio, but they also do have an audio option. That way you can kind of design the atmosphere of your laundromat the way that you want it. So get rid of cable, get rid of those news channels that are bringing negativity into your laundromat and fill your laundromat with positive videos that bring positive vibes to your customers with Atmosphere TV. And if you use the code word, the keyword, the uh, promo code, I don't know, resource, promo code resource, then they're going to waive your setup fee. And now everything is going to be free. There's no monthly fee for it. Um, you can use it for free in your laundromat and it's going to be a vibe to your uh, atmosphere. So check out atmosphere.tv. I'll put a link down in the description on YouTube or in the show notes. Check it out there. Make sure you use the keyword resource that we can get that thing for free. And, or if you'd like, email Mike at mike.kelly at atmosphere.tv. TV. Luis, thank you so much for coming on the podcast today. How are you doing, man? Very good. Very good. Thank you for, uh, for having me. I know oh. that we, we, we tried a few months back and now we're, uh, we're in the game. <laughs> now I have a little bit more time to breathe and, and uh, make sure that I can give you uh, all the info that I know everybody wants to, wants to know. Yeah. Well, this has been a long time coming. I have been anticipating it forever. And we just chatted a little bit before we hit record and I'm, I'm, actually really, really excited uh, just to hear about how you're running your business, how you got into it and all that stuff. But before we jump into all that, can you give us a little bit of a background on you and who you are? And then we'll go into how you got into this business. Sure, sure, sure. So my name is Luis Alicea and I am uh, I, I, I was born and raised in San Juan, Puerto Rico. I, I currently live in San Juan and we operate uh, our business out of San Juan. Um, but most of my family is actually in the States. So I have family in Miami, I have family in Missouri, I have family in New Jersey. Um, and my, my grandfather used to live in, in, in New York. Uh, my mom was, uh, born in New York city. Uh, but the rest of my family were born in Pennsylvania from my, my, my mother's side. Um, I'm a single child, which means that, uh, uh, I, I cherish my five cousins that I have and they all live in the States. So, uh, my wife is from Puerto Rico. We've been married, uh, and we've been together now for 11 years, but we have four kids. So it's kind of a little Puerto Rican Brady bunch. So yeah. two from my side, two from my mom, my wife's side, uh, beautiful kids. That's, uh, that's who we, uh, we do everything for. And, uh, I've, I've been, I've, I've actually was, um, uh, I've worked for three major fortune 500 companies. I kind of retired from that. And eventually with the background that I have in technology, technology, sales, leadership, I uh, kind of figure out, figured out, I wanted to do something different. Um, very different by the way. And my wife and I, we kind of figured out, okay, where can we put our brains together? And, uh, you know, you hear this word disruption, right? Uh -huh. um, well, how can we disrupt a little bit a market that in our, or business or, or product offering where in our market, 
hasn't really been looked at. So we wanted to kind of jump in to, uh, to do something, again, very different. And, and that's how we started into, into the laundry business. So are you trying to tell me that there's not a lot of overlap between working at a Fortune 500 and owning a laundromat? I think that there is a lot of things that you don't want to do from a Fortune 500 company level to bring into the into a laundromat. But I, I think that there's a lot of different things that done right from an entrepreneurial vision, mm-hmm. um, you know, taking out all the red tape, taking out all the cumbersome stuff that happens at a Fortune 500 company, but saying, you know, the essence of good service, the essence of uh, knowing your numbers, your KPIs, knowing how technology really can help you mm-hmm. uh, and how there's a bunch of different things that today Fortune 500s pay for, but small business can get almost for free um, at different levels. So it's not very difficult to implement a very good sound business plan, a very good sound implementation of a, of a, of a business strategy and execute uh, probably at a higher level than many people think that they are not capable of doing, but that now they're avail- that there's technology and there's services out there that can help you. Um, and it's, it's not expensive. First of all, it's not cumbersome or difficult. Um, it's just that it was probably available for high level companies or very, very comp- companies that are, are making a lot of money um, and probably have, uh, you know, a, a different pricing structures or, or different business models that what a laundromat should should be looked at. Um, but listen, to be honest with you, when we started thinking about the laundromat, it was more about a, as an investor, right? When you do your research, there's a lot out there as an investor and where you can put your money mm-hmm. and let it grow and, you know, have somebody else uh, do the work for you, including mm-hmm. just having unattended laundromats. Um, and that's a business strategy. I mean, that's something that's worked out for a lot of people. There's a lot of people out there making good money um, with unattended laundromats. We thought about it from a different perspective. So we, we thought about it from the perspective that if we put our heads together, um, we could compete probably in the laundry business using a model of a laundromat as your, as your base, right? So your home base is that that one location that you can process a lot of clothes um, at different levels. Mm -hmm. And that has given us the ability to kind of diversify our product offering and at the same time grow exponentially uh, from zero to where we are today. And we can talk about the numbers later on. Yeah. I mean, you said a lot of stuff in there that was semi-cryptic and very intriguing about, you know, things that we can do as small business owners for free or very cheap. So I definitely want to get into that in a little bit. Sure. Um, so don't let me forget to ask you about that. But sure. let me let me go back a little bit here. And so I know you you said you were looking for maybe something you can kind of semi disrupt in your, in your market. What, what was it about laundromats that was like, yes, this is the direction that we want to go. So listen, we live in an Island. So basically you're in Puerto Rico still, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. We're in Puerto yeah. Rico. So it means that we're, you know, we're in the middle of the Atlantic ocean. Uh, it's, it's not too difficult to, to visualize that you are about a, a thousand miles away, a little bit less than a thousand miles away from Miami, which is kind of the closest point. Um, nonetheless, uh, in Puerto Rico, there is quite a few, there are quite a few uh, laundromats available. But when you go, the population that, that they cater to tends to be the lower end kind of client. Um, the What we were able to see is that there is an untapped market that needs the services of a laundromat. And because the investment has not been made in the current laundromats, um, we were thinking like, okay, is it because there is no money out there to be made in a higher end or or a better set up laundromat, even if it caters to the same market? Here's what, what the catch is. We're, our goal was not to, 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 
our goal was not to discriminate against a specific market. Our goal was to build a community-based laundromat where anybody could go in there and expect great service, great, great wash at, at a, an affordable price. So uh, uh, we, what we, we, we started seeing when, when, when my wife and I uh, started talking about this is, okay, what happened 2017, there was a hurricane in Puerto Rico and it took out the whole electric system, electrical system. So for example, in my house, uh, we were out of power for about 90 days to a little bit over uh, a little bit over 90 days. And we were able to get electricity back rather quickly. What we learned is with our power generator, which a lot of houses have in Puerto Rico, not all of them, but a lot, you can't run your washer dryer. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's very difficult to do, especially the dryer. It takes a lot of power because most dryers here are, you know, 220 volts or they're not gas based. So in our case, we did, we went ahead and we bought a washer, a new wash, new dryer, which we were due to buy in the house anyway. And we saw that there was a need, even in my office, I was working for the largest brokerage firm uh, in Puerto Rico back then. I was a vice president of sales for that, for that firm. And everybody had, it was 120 associates. Everybody had the same problem. They, they didn't know where to take their laundry. So in other words, if you have executives, people that are that have the purchasing power to outsource their laundry when they really needed it, and there was no one place in particular in their mind that was capable of saying, OK, can you call them up and have them pick up the clothes and bring it back in the afternoon? That's not available in the market. OK, can I take it somewhere? Uh, no, you can't because the places that are available are jam packed and they're catering to a different market. So some companies, we saw that they bought washers and dryers and they installed them in their businesses and they offered the free service to their associates. My wife and I were thinking, wait a minute, I think there's, there's, you know, there's a market out there mm. for having a product that is available at, at that level, you know, it may not be 24 seven in our Island. We don't have a 24 seven laundromat available. So it's a, it's a market that has that open still. Um, so we, we kept thinking about it and again, this is 2017, 2018, 2019 and 2019, we were able to kind of figure out that there was a location outside of San Juan area. Oh, it was cheaper utilities, cheaper, uh, rent that we could build a home base and offer products and services from that location. So we made the investment in, uh, in 2019. Um, we started doing the build out at, at the end of 19 and we opened in January of 2020. Uh, so think about this, January, 2020, right yeah. when the situation with COVID-19 yeah. was coming about. <laughs> And, and here, here's the kicker on that 50 States, including the territories, uh, you know, the U S 50 States, Guam, which is a territory, USVI, which is a territory. They all, this, they, they all, um, uh, uh, decreed, right. That laundry services were essential services. Mm -hmm. What are we yeah. government said? Nope. It's not, it's not an essential service. you got to close. And we're like, okay. So we wrote to the government, hey, listen, you know, the CLA is 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 uh, is advocating for every, every state jurisdiction, everybody to say that laundromats or laundry services mm -hmm. are, uh, you know, uh, they need to be open, even with whatever restrictions you want to put, but but they have to provide the service, uh, especially because of hygiene and everything else. Uh, and they said, no, you can't open, you can't operate. We went back and we said, listen, look at the look at the list of people that are in your essential services uh, category. Every one of those categories from top to bottom are our clients. Every one of them, they do, you know, the, the, the pharmacist. You don't know how many uh, nurses we have. We have a bunch of nurses. We do a lot of scrubs um, and, and I'm closed. So when we explain the situation, what they said is, Okay, you can operate, but you can't open to the public. 
So we're thinking, okay. So we've been thinking from the beginning that we would establish a pickup and delivery service and some sort of, and we knew that, that the growth of the business, the, the revenue generating portion of the business would be wash and fold. Mm -hmm. So from January through March, which is basically when Puerto Rico decided to close and they did a hard stop. They said, okay, March 15th, everybody's got to close. Um, we had probably two, three clients in wash and fold. We, 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 I mean, it, it was really like, shit, I know, I know we got to get into it, but it's, it's, it's hard, right? It's, yeah. it's hard because it's, it's an unknown company, an unknown brand, an unknown location. Um, so COVID hit, we closed, we asked for permission two weeks later, they gave it to us and we started, uh, slowly, but surely, uh, getting the word out that we were open, that we were able to do pickup and delivery. And then we activated from our POS system, the pickup and delivery portion of, mm -hmm. uh, of the POS. Cause we, we already had the technology to do it. It was just a matter of a big push turning on the switch and, uh, we didn't have a truck. We didn't have the, you know, with the driver, we didn't have anything. So I'm like, right. crap, I got to do it. I, I got to go out there and do it. So I took my car and then I took my mom's truck. Um, and then I took my wife's car and then it was like, okay, so eventually we bought a truck and then that's, you know, that's a whole different thing. But, uh, but we were able to grow, uh, the wash and fold type of business in, into what, what we do today, which is almost 50% of our revenue. Nonetheless, going back to, to the original story is, you know, when we thought about the business, we thought about it from the perspective that it's not only an investment, it's really where we want to spend time and develop. And hopefully, you know, we have this one location. We've already looked at different locations where we can do investments um, in the near future. Mm -hmm. uh, but we've been cautiously optimistic about investing in those locations. We want to get what we have now to a, to a point where we know it's, it's working. And so far, so far, so good. Man, talk about trial by fire right there. Just being open and, you know, pretty much shutting down like within a few months Big time. Um, and having to really pivot your whole business model. I mean, shutting down is one thing, but it might be even more difficult, more trying to have to pivot your whole business model. Well, I mean, you know, sounds like you were thinking about doing that anyways, but really accelerating it to where you're like, whatever vehicle I can get a hold of. Yeah. Cause I'll get a hold of it. Yeah. When we did our business, when we thought about it, let's not even talk about doing a formal business plan. Okay. When you're thinking about it and jotting down your notes. Okay. By 2021, we want to get into the pickup and delivery business right. because we think that there's, there's, you know, we get some of our grocery, this is what we thought, right? We get some of our groceries from a, a supermarket nearby. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, the next town over that they do pick up, they do delivery. And they do a very good job. And they have their trucks and they have their website and you order and it's super simple and it works. And I'm looking at how they do it. And I'm like, these guys are in the next town over. I mean, it's not like they're next door. Mm -hmm. And from that next town over, they have a bigger store which serves the, 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 an area which is far beyond their one mile, one square mile. Right. Much bigger and, radius. And we thought about that. And we, and we said, why don't we build, even if it's 2,000 square foot, but what if we have enough machines that we could service outside of our area? So when we build the business plan, yes, you know, when, when you do your, your, your research for a location, population density is super important, but then think about, okay, I have roughly about a million, a million people that live San Juan and the adjacent municipalities. Mm -hmm. It's about a million, 1.1 out of almost 3 million, which is a whole Island. Mm -hmm. So I can do very well with a million. I mean, I can do very, I mean, I could get yeah. to a point where yeah. I could need, 10 stores and I don't, you know, and I already have kind of a, where the locations would be. Um, but, but the idea is how do we, you know, ex exploit basically what we have and we get to the breaking point and then we say, okay, now that's, that's running. That's it's, it's well oiled machine. 
things are running. Okay, now we can open a second location or a third or a fourth or a fifth. It doesn't matter. Um, but let's do it right the first time. But then, but those those were thinking those were ideas for 2021 and beyond. Right. Which when we had to close, I, I told my wife, I mean, we we got to pay the rent, we got to pay the, the lease on the machines, we got to pay. I mean, this this doesn't stop, mm-hmm. and, and you might get a 90 day extension, but that's it. So so we jumped on the on the on the bandwagon of pushing through and making sure that we could take care of, we'll find the spots where there was opportunity and, and make sure that we went after them. And it's, it's paid out. It's paid out very well. Very well. Jeez. Well, yeah. I mean, talk about accelerating that timeline, you know, thinking about starting to ramp it up, you know, in 2021 and nine months before that having to go pretty much pedal to the metal in order to survive the, so, I mean, I know everybody was scrambling at that point, trying to figure out what was going on, trying to figure out what they were going to do, but, you know, being brand new into the business, it's a, it's a tough yeah. spot to be in. Very tough. Very yeah. tough. But, but again, we, we, you know, we love the challenge. I think that that's what makes it different for, for us. It's that first of all, we love the challenge. Second of all, we know that it, we knew it wasn't going to be easy. Um, we knew that that the only way to see if, if we were being successful technically was one client at a time and kind of figure out if we're doing something wrong, fix it immediately. Mm-hmm. And, and then, you know, just don't wait for things to pile up. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that having that resiliency and having that f- mindset of, okay, you got to wake up every morning and you're probably on the first five or six days, you're going to do the same thing and nothing is going to happen except that you're truly moving forward um, unless you see something breaking and then you, you, you know, you pivot and you fix it Mm -hmm. and and you do that consistently. Um, And, and that, that's not for everybody. I mean, that's either this business or any other business you get into and you're almost falling without a parachute until the the last moment. Um, That parachute is going to probably be, uh, a very big uh, uh, parachute that says success on top, mm-hmm. um, but it does take countless days, seven days a week, uh, you know, and, and driving probably things that, that if you're comfortable in another type of business and you're complacent, uh, this is not going to, it's not going to work out for you. It's not. Yeah. It's almost like you're weaving that parachute on the way down and you only right. survive if you finish, <laughs> you know, Correct. And, I mean, and that's where the grit comes in too, right? Like yep. success is, I mean, you know, I don't have actual statistics on this, but success is like 90% grit, right? It's like, yep. you just keep growing, keep learning, keep pivoting, keep adjusting. And eventually you get it figured out. And there are ways yep. to shortcut that by, you know, finding mentors or people who've already done it or, right. you know, learning, you know, being on forums or Facebook groups, like that kind of stuff. But, yeah. uh, but man, it's still that grit that it really requires. And I know the last, you know, year and a half or so has been crazy and unprecedented, but there's always unprecedented times. There's always big challenges and small challenges that come and throw you those curveballs. Yeah. And yeah. if you're not, if you're not ready to come in and do what it takes then you, it's going to be a big struggle, yep. you know? So, um, okay. Well, can you tell us a little bit about how you bought the, I mean, did you buy a laundromat? Did you build it? Did you, what was that so, experience like? Yeah. I mean, w- when we, we went out to the market locally and we, we visited almost every laundromat in the area. So I, I, I took the task and I, I made about two visits. My wife went and did all the visits mm-hmm. and she came back with pricing, with models, with the kind of a square footage. She's very good at that. Mm-hmm. And, and she's like, look, every single place we're looking for, we're looking at, we would have to gut out and redo. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, there was one that we saw, which was newer. It was very well placed, really good location, a high traffic area. And we we're like, huh. I think that's, you know, that's a model we can, we can kind of follow. First of all, then my wife and I, we visit, we went to Miami, we have family there. So we went to Miami and we visited a couple of laundromats. 
uh, over there. And then, you know, we did a lot of uh, research on the web. There's, there's a bunch of different brokers out there. There's, a, there's obviously all the brands have their own marketing information. So we absorbed as much as we could trying to figure out, okay, do we want to buy an existing laundromat? Um, and that has its pro- pros and cons, or do we want to just build it out from scratch and do it our way uh, based on, on our vision for, for the business? And at the end of the day, that's what we decided on. Um, there, there really wasn't a, a local location that we, we felt comfortable with kind of putting an offer in or, or figuring out. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of laundromats in, in, in our area that you go in there and they might have 10 machines and two are working, mm-hmm. um, you know, 20 dryers and three are working and, and, and they're, at least they turn on. It doesn't mean that they dry. It just means right, that they turn yeah. on. <laughs> so, you know, th- there's a lot of that. And, and it's, it was very difficult for us to kind of comprehend why we would buy something that has already been depreciated and we will have to gut and redo. And it was, it's like, you know, and, and in our market, we're not going to get it for free. You know, it doesn't matter how much you, you negotiate. You're not just not, you're not going to get the key for free. Right. So, uh, so we, we decided on a specific location that we had already seen uh, 2000 square foot uh, high traffic area, very good uh, area in terms of uh, population density. Um, a lot of residential areas in in, in, uh, in the vicinity. Uh, good location to access other areas. So we can get to a lot of different areas within the San Juan metropolitan area just from that one location. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and we made an offer for the rental, basically. Uh, at the same time that we're trying to figure out, okay, who do we go with in terms of the technology that we wanted to, to put in place? And the goal wasn't to buy, uh, to buy cheap. That, that wasn't the goal. The goal was never to get um, the, the, the cheapest machines at the cheapest price. Because our, 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 our experience tells us that if you do that, you're, you're probably going to start on the wrong foot mm-hmm. just because you, you don't know where you want to get. If, if you don't, if you do that, then you don't know where you want to get to. And our goal was, we know exactly where we want to get to. I mean, we want to operate 24 hours. Mm-hmm. We don't want to open 24 hours, but we do want to operate 24 hours. So that means that, you know, 50% of the business, we wanted it to be walk-in traffic, people coming in, doing their own stuff. Uh, that gives you some revenue coming in. And then we wanted to operate uh, with employees. And at later hours, we want to do you know, the wash and fold, uh, for, for, uh, residential uh, clients. And we also wanted to do small commercial, you know, we're very well aware of our, our limitations in the commercial space, but you know, if you do Airbnbs and you do towels and you do uh, that type of, of, uh, of servicing, that's something that you can do overnight and make, make good money on that. So th- we knew that that was our goal. Our ultimate goal was to offer a, a service which was agnostic to where the location of our business was. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of clients that really they've never visited our our location. They don't know where we are. They do know because we sell it that we have uh, the correct machines to do their commercial uh, laundry. And because the type of equipment that we have, then we we're able to offer an improved service or a quality of service timing that is very difficult to match. So our, our thought was, let's go on the higher end and let's figure out, can we get a local vendor to do it? Because I need support. I mean, I, I'm, with one store, I don't have a staff or I don't have people to, there to fix anything that happens. And, and it's not like that I'm not a handyman. It's just that I, I want to be able to get on the phone and have somebody come over and fix you know, major things, maybe something small, not necessarily, but major things we do need support. So eventually um, we looked at the vendors uh, and dealers in in Miami, uh, which were the closest. Uh, There's some brands that don't have representation in Puerto Rico. So we were able to kind of figure out, okay, well, who are the ones that are in Puerto Rico? Um, And those are 
Uh, Continental has a very good representation of Puerto Rico. They have a, a lot, some good machines installed. In, they don't have a lot. They have just very good machines installed in in different places, especially OPL uh, hotels and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and we were able to kind of figure out, okay, if you're doing this for this type of industry, it's somewhat similar to where we want to be. Is it a brand that we would want to partner with? And let me tell you, it was the best decision. It was really, really the best decision. The, the dealer, uh, in this case, is, they supplied not only the machines, but they helped us with the actual design of the store, mm -hmm. uh, top to bottom. You know, when we got the key, we had already been negotiating with them. So when we cleaned out everything, we called them in and we said, okay, here's a store. What do we want to do with this? Where do we want to put the, the machines? Because that, that takes care of electricity, the water, uh, you know, how do we get water in, water out? How do we storage water? What type of pumps do we need? What type of, if, if, if we're going to have hot water, then what do we use for that? So, and they helped with everything. It was kind of a turnkey solution. Mm. Was it cheap? No, it wasn't cheap. But, but here's the thing. And, and, and this, you might want to put a parenthesis to anybody that's listening to this. Think that when you are dealing with or negotiating with your vendor, if you start haggling, let's say that they have 10 clients and you start haggling, they take you down to number 11. Because then you, you're, you're not a priority client. You're just a client that wants the best price for the, you know, probably the cheapest or the mid-range machines. And, and hey, at the end of the day, if you have a budget, then that's the budget you got to tell your dealer with. And, and they'll help you with that. But they got to be your business partner. Mm -hmm. if, if, if you see them as just the company that's going to sell you the machines and that's it, then that's a mistake. Because at the end of the day, look, the machine's going to get there. It'll probably take some time to, to, because of what's happening nowadays with shipping and manufacturing and everything. It's going to take some time to get there. But once it's installed and you have revenue coming in, you need to have somebody, especially the dealer that has access to the parts. It has access to the technicians. It has access to whatever it is that you need on an ongoing basis to make sure that your, your business is running. And if you just, because you're haggling and you're making it difficult to do business with, uh, if you get to number to, to out of the top 10 clients, you become number 11 or 15th or the last, when you call, they're not going to take your call because mm -hmm. they're dealing with the clients that are paying the fair price for whatever it is that they're offering. Now, are there, are there dealers like my dealer out there, which I, I truly trust what they, what they do? Uh, yes, there are. You got to do your research. Not every market uses the same brands. So top name brands of machines in our market probably are not available. Not all of them. Not all of them. So we were able to buy the best that we could afford with the best support. And I got to tell you, I mean, right now, we run 12-hour shifts every day from 8 o'clock in the morning to 8 o'clock at night, seven days a week. And our machines are working flawlessly. I had one machine, 60 pound machine, one that had an issue with it, with a seal, with a door seal, mm -hmm. call them up. I have an issue. It's dripping water. Here's the video. Here's what's happening. You got to come and fix it. Yes. Two days later, the guy comes up, he fixes, sends me, I think they sent me uh, an invoice basically because it was under warranty, but they need to send out the invoice. And it was zero charge and everything's working. And then the guy called me. Now, the good thing about this guy who was a salesperson, he calls me, hey, everything's working, everything's working. He is now the president of the company. So his character is, is so uh, clean that he went from sales to being the president. It doesn't, it doesn't hurt that he's the son of the owner, but he, he deserves it, right? He deserves it. He deserves to be in the position. And the only things that have happened to our machines, I can name them. That seal, one card, uh, one communications card that went bust in one 20 pound machine, and one cable that came out of a dryer. And it was, it was kind of a connection cable, which activated the, uh, the, 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 the heat spark. Mm -hmm. um, that's it. 
in a year and a half and we've done you know thousands of starts on a on a monthly basis uh so having the uh, uh, good equipment uh, really has helped us out kind of just focus on making sure that we're, we can reach our goals um, and not have the issues of because you don't have the right equipment, you're trying to get into the wrong type of business. And then it hurts your business because your client says, well, wait a minute, you told me you could do this, but in essence, you can't. Mm-hmm. You have the idea of what you really want to do, but you got to make sure that you have the equipment to do it paired up with the employees to help you because at the end of the day, without the manpower, you're not going to, you're not going to get there. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, man, awesome, awesome, uh, advice and input there because I mean, I think I've said this before, but working with the best people helps you become your best. Right. And when you, especially when you're working with a good distributor who can help you do things like lay out the store, uh, help you think through machine mix, uh, yeah. Who's going to give you that support on the back end, which is missing with a lot of um, distributors, you know? W- but when you can get that and you work with somebody like that, I mean, your chances of success and the heights that you can go to with your success dramatically increase. Um, so awesome that you found really good support and really good equipment, and you're yeah. able to kind of take advantage of that. Um, so. So you built the store basically. Did you have to yeah. do all the infrastructure? How long did all that take? So it was about 90 days, uh, 90 days and change. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if you remember that movie that the, that the guy was saying, oh, two weeks. Everything takes two weeks. Everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and it, it's not two weeks, but, uh, but we were able to find. So, so we, we divided the plan based on, uh, first of all, we thought, okay, Let's it, it, let's gut out the store. So mm-hmm. so our location, fortunately, is it's basically uh, it, it was basically all open open space with two columns in the middle. Mm-hmm. Um, we redid the bathrooms, which was the first thing we did. Uh, we redid the bathrooms. We figured out that there wasn't really any infrastructure for water coming in or out. There was just one input outlet. Uh, and one outlet and one input of water. And that was it. And it was in the back of the store mm-hmm. and all the electricity. Uh, what we were able to find out was that the panel, the electrical panel uh, did support the amount of machines that we wanted to have. Oh, that's so, good. yeah. So, so we were able to get the same guy to do the plumbing. He did our, uh, physical drywall stuff and then so we had him for plumbing and drywall and and then we had the electrician mm-hmm. and that was basically it because the distributor was able to get us for free basically for free uh all the schematics and all the design work associated where with um machine placement Mm. So based on, on the volume that we wanted to have and based on uh, the placement that we thought was good, then we were able to kind of say, okay, here's where the machines go. Um, it's kind of a circle. Um, uh, and then we, we, we were able to say, okay, everything, you know, for the dryers, we need to have three foot to behind just for support, cleaning and everything. And then, the machines need to have the water coming in and the water going out mm-hmm. and it needs to be in a way that we can manage um, maintenance in the middle. So the, all the machines are back to back. Um, and with that information and with just the size of the location, uh, the manufacturer actually is the one who did the design work for uh our template for the store um could, because we we were you know we told them from the get-go you know this is what we want to do if we can at least ha- have a uh you know this is our budget this is what we want to do what do you suggest we saw a couple of machines that we thought were the ones that we really wanted to to use and then once we had all of that decided then we went into designing and they you know they invested on their part with having the support with, uh, you know, we have like a mechanical plants, mm-hmm. uh, electrical plants, plumbing plants, all of that was done 
actually by by the manufacturer. Um, That's so, awesome. So yeah. the support, I mean, you, you can't, you know, what, what am I going to get? 2% less on a machine. I'd rather pay the 2% and say, Hey, you know, I'm a good client. Yeah, uh, that's right. <laughs> that's it. And, uh, and that, that really helped us out. So again, 90 days, um, for the actual, uh, uh, build out a little bit less than 90, a uh, little bit less than 90 days. It would probably 60 days, uh, for, uh, uh, basically to have just, uh, all of that mechanical stuff and all the design work, everything, all of that done, uh, prior to starting. Uh, and we, I think we placed the order for the machines late November and they arrived December 30th. Oh, awesome. In, in Puerto Rico, they were just, but, but again, it, it was in a moment where nothing was really backed up. I mean, right, things were yeah, running along. People so, would die for that right now. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, I mean, you're a brand new laundromat, new location, wasn't there before, no existing clients. What was your plan to promote it, to differentiate, to, you know, what, what was the plan? How are you going to make this business happen? So, and so here's where, where you can go back to your notes and, and look at the free stuff. Um, so Facebook, first thing we did with Facebook was, uh, well, prior to that, figure out a name for the business, figure out a, a brand name for the business. Um, we, we, we decided on a specific name. We, we, we did not want it to be associated necessarily with the location. Mm -hmm. Um, and we didn't necessarily want it to be associated with laundromat. Mm -hmm. So, so we decided on a specific name. We kind of build out, uh, the logo, uh, color schemes. And, but these are, again, these are things that you can do online, uh, basically for free. I mean, you can use, there's, there's a website called Canva and it helps you out with kind of figuring out how to do a little logo. Again, these are things that you could pay for, but these are, there are also things that you can do on your own. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and Canva, what we did is we just selected a, a, a letter a type uh, and we just stuck to that mm -hmm. and we said we repeat it you know it'll it'll we'll own it basically mm -hmm. um so but it's it's generic right i mean it's something generic so we use canva to create our logo um and then eventually what we did is we took the logo we opened up a facebook account with a facebook page for the business and the only thing that we started to advertise is opening soon. And we tried to kind of figure out, okay, what are the two or three things that we know we will deliver for the business, for, for our clients? What are the two or three things that we, we will deliver, which kind of becomes your promise? You know, what are you promising your clients? So one of the things, because of the machines that we, that we bought, uh, we were able to tell our clients, hey, you can wash and dry in one hour or less. Simple message, simple stuff, right? Why? Because the machines, in essence, are 24 minute cycles and the dryers are set to 30 minute cycles. And you should be able to wash and dry at the basic level, um, either with cold, uh, uh, what is it, cold um, and hot water. Um, and warm water. So we have the three, uh, uh, cold, warm, and hot water. Mm -hmm. Funny thing is in Puerto Rico, it's always warm water anyway, but <laughs> cold, warm, and hot, um, 24 minutes, uh, our machines, they have a, a panel and you can kind of up, upsell some other stuff, which, which is really cool. Um, you can do what's called super wash and it does a longer cycle, hot water, uh, faster, uh, faster spinning, and then the drying, because we're using a card system and it's not quarter based, we're not using coins at all. Mm -hmm. Then we were able to kind of set, okay, we can do three minutes at a minimum, six minutes, 15 minutes, and 30 minutes. And those are on the, we have 30 pound machines and 45 pound machines. So on the base, you, you can tell a client, hey, you can wash and dry in an hour or less. And then that's what we started advertising. But the way we did it was, we set up a profile 
in Facebook. We set up a profile in Google, um, my business. Mm -hmm. Again, it's free. You set it up and you put your information there. And we did set up a, a, a very cheap uh, website, which was just a splash page. And the splash page, what we did is we bought a stock photo. It was $10. Stock photo of a girl, basically very happy. And it just said opening soon, laundromat location, and the tagline, you know, wash and dry in one hour or less. Mm -hmm. And it did have a subscription pl place where it said sign up for announcements or for promos, promotions, whatever. The idea was to start getting people to leave us their email mm -hmm. because we would be announcing our opening date to that public and specific whenever it is that we, we knew we were going to open. We, we did a soft opening uh, January 17th and we never closed. So we just opened and, and that was it. Mm -hmm. um, but our uh, the, the Google page is free. Facebook page is free. Mm -hmm. Instagram is free. Yelp, which not many people like Yelp. But here's the catch with Yelp. Use it. Open your page. Put it up. Put your logos. Put your, your uh, photos. Put all your business information. And that's it. And leave it there. Mm -hmm. Why? Because Yelp drives information to Google. And they have what's called a top 10 list which it's organically made mm -hmm. based on whoever's in there. Um, and if you do it well, again, for free, if you do it well, your business in that specific location where you're at will appear in the top 10 list. Mm -hmm. So within, within the first less than 90 days before, after we opened, we were already trending in their top 10 list free of charge. Mm -hmm. We were already appearing in Google searches faster just because we had presence in Facebook, Google, Yelp, Instagram, and we had a small website that uh, that was capturing, which we ev <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> eventually we were able to convert it to um, uh, to a website that had basic information mm -hmm. uh, within this next six to seven months. When we started doing pickup and delivery. Uh, then we took it down and we uh, uh, we were able to kind of just figure out a different way of promoting our business. And now by the end of this month of July, we're reopening our website and it's it's more geared to our other services that we want to promote, um, which are more search based. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and uh, you know, at the, at the end of the day, all these platforms that exist, if you know how to use them, um, and it's not rocket science. It's just take take five, 10 minutes and kind of figure out, do the tutorials or do, you know, follow the couple of steps that they ask you to follow. Um, you would see a dramatic increase. Uh, for example, we get probably one or two new clients a day that do that come to us because they do a Google search mm -hmm. and Google says laundromats near me. That's one of the first search categories that they force. They kind of force it into the client. Mm -hmm. So when they click on that, if you, if you have your profile well-maintained in Google, they will promote you organically, meaning that, that yes, you can pay for clicks and ads and stuff within Google, but if you do it well, you use Yelp, on the back end and you use Google on a front end. And then you do the rest that you could do in Facebook and even Instagram organically, meaning for free and meaning that they're going to do it. They're going to promote a business um, that is probably more active. And we get one or two a day organically. We've actually, we've never paid for paid ads in, in Google. Mm -hmm. which you should do. But let's say that you don't do it as long as you have it. If you maintain it, you maintain the information correctly. Um, Google is going to probably sponsor you a little bit better. It, organically, you're going to get uh, more hits. Mm -hmm. um, where we've paid is in Facebook ads because that's kind of a different, it's kind of a different thing, right? Uh, Facebook, uh, uh, Google is for people who are looking for your service. Mm -hmm. 
Facebook is more for people that are not necessarily looking for your service, but if you push them a promotion, they're going to go like, Hey, Oh, look at this. Uh, so we did a, a promo in May of, of 2020, we did a promotion for, uh, for betting comforters and, and betting. It was mm -hmm. like $10, any size. And all we're thinking is, you know, I need to, I need to get those machines running somehow. Mm -hmm. So for $10, you could get your, your comforter. We did the first month we did 75. Okay. At 10 bucks. Second month we did 150. Third month we're doing 300 and it's never stopped. And we kept it at 10 bucks. We're about to increase prices now because you know, it keeps going and going and going. But what, mm -hmm. what was cool about it is betting is something that people that do not go to laundromats use. Yep. Yep. So I was able to kind of get a hook and compete in a completely different category, which is not associated necessarily with laundromats. But I, with that, I was able to get Airbnbs. I was able to get some other type of business um, just because I had, a, I had a hook. I had something mm -hmm. to offer. But the, the way to do it was basically through Facebook because you can do targeted ads per location. And even though it's changed a little bit now, but, uh, but it still worked wonders. Uh, specifically, in, if, if in your region, uh, Facebook has good, good coverage, which, they, which typically they do. They do. Yeah. Super smart. Super smart. I love kind of your strategies. Of, and for anybody who's not familiar with Canva, uh, which you mentioned earlier, I'll put a link in the show notes, or if you're on YouTube down below in the description, you can check out Canva, but it's a, it's a free tool where you can do some great, not just logo designs, but even social media posts or, yep. and there's, it's going to look good and, and uh, make you look professional. Make you look like a graphic designer. Um, so check that out. But I love the, the strategy uh, that you guys had in terms of running some ads before you were open, trying to drive traffic to mm -hmm. your landing page, which was collecting email addresses. That way you, when you flung open the doors, you already had a client list that you could start marketing to and, and wooing um, through your different techniques uh, of marketing, promotions, those kinds of things. Um, and I think it's super smart that you did the betting promotion because like you said, you know, a lot of people who are never going to think about, you know, using a laundromat, are, they, they still have that question, like, how do I wash my bedding, right? Like comforters, hard to fit a comforter in your you know, in your at home washing machine, if you have one yeah. and, but, but introducing them to that service and then letting them know, Hey, you know, how all that other laundry that you hate doing, we can do yeah. all that too. And, uh, I mean, I think that was super, super smart. Yeah. Um, okay. So, Oh, go ahead. Were you going to say something? No, no, go ahead. No, no. Okay. Ahead. Yeah. So, I mean, you mentioned Airbnbs, are you doing a lot of Airbnb stuff and how's that, how's that going? It's been, that's, that's been kind of a wild ride. And it started with uh, a friend of some friend of ours. They, they kind of didn't know what we were, we were up to. Mm -hmm. And uh, we started having a conversation with them and they're like, what, what do you mean that you have a, a laundry service? Cause sometimes it depends on who you talk to. They, mm -hmm. they kind of either get it or they don't get it. If you say a laundromat, then their vision is, okay, you go there, you put the coins in and you wash your clothes. Okay. Right. right. That's rather simple, but there's some people. And, and in our case, we wanted to, to cater probably uh, to other services. I kind of knew where, what they were doing. I just didn't know the extent of what they were doing. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I started talking about our laundry service and, and we, we talked about the different things that we do. And they looked at me and they said, like, okay, I got, I got to hook you up with my daughter, my youngest daughter. She's managing uh, one of our, they have a real estate company, but, but she's managing one of the side, side businesses of the real estate company, which is Airbnb. I'm like, okay, that's curious. Hey, we might be able to help her out. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure if I can, but, but I'll try. So two weeks later, we talked to her and she's like, yeah, I have 11 properties and we have like 24 beds that we need to do on a weekly basis. That's, that's a small hotel, you know, 24 mm -hmm. beds is a small hotel. Mm -hmm. um, I'm like, okay, so where's the location? The location was a little bit outside of my service area, 
but here I'm thinking opportunity. So I'll take, I'll take a stab at it. And it's, it's amazing. So what happens is she has high end clients that give her their homes. Um, she managed, she buys the linen. So in this case, she's the one who owns the linen. Mm-hmm. The owner allows her to put her linen and we take care of the washing. And what she told me was, listen, my number one headache right now is turnover of linen. Mm-hmm. Be, turnover in terms of, of, of keeping the linen, because we, we tend to not buy the correct linen, first of all. Second of all, we use whatever machines are available at the individual houses. So it turns out she has 11 properties, right? So not every property has a machine. So she needs to carry back and forth uh, the linen to different houses just to, to, to clean it. Mm-hmm. And then it's costing her an arm and a leg because it takes about 10 hours to do the laundry basically for one property. One mm-hmm. property is about 10 hours because that property has, I don't know, six or seven beds. Plus the type of bedding that they have is, is, is large. The type of towels that they buy is large. So when I started talking to her, I kind of you know, I put my business hat on and I started doing a little bit of research and kind of figure out, Hey, listen, if you change that type of bedding, there is bedding out there. There are sheets and linens out there, which are hotel grade, but you don't have to buy in bulk. You can just, you know, you can just buy what you need and, and, and they weigh less, they dry faster and it'll be probably cheaper if we do it for you. And then and she's like, okay, let's do a trial. So she gave us one property. We did the turnaround. She gave it to me in the morning. I called her at night and said, listen, I have, I have the order here for you. And she's like, what do you mean? I'm like, yeah, it's already done. Like, okay. For the same day. Yeah. Same day. Um, so I, I delivered back and it was all, it was all what, what we did to differentiate ourselves was, you know, kind of figure out the sizes and max them up and give her a bag that says, you know, here's a queen bed, here's a king size bed, here's a twin or the couple of twin beds, Mm -hmm. and here's the tops, and here's all your towels, and everything's stacked, and everything is organized, and here's the whole order. And that way you can take that and give it to your cleaning lady, and she knows exactly where it goes in every room. Mm -hmm. And she was like, oh my God, can you do that for all of my properties? I'm like, yes, I can. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> All I need is the opportunity. Yeah. Now here, here's what having the right systems in place from the beginning helped us out. Our POS was built for that. So I was able to just tell her, listen, I'll open an account. I'll put your credit card on file. And every time I go and pick up, I will pick it up. I will give you a flat rate per weight. I will weigh it. I will charge you. And I will process and deliver back in the moment that you tell me. By the way, because we have the technology in place, you're going to know when the driver's on the way to mm-hmm. pick it up, when it was picked up, when it was cleaned, when the driver's going back, and then when, when, it, when it was delivered. All that communication. Plus, you're going to get to see online all your invoices or your bills per property. Um, so you can build back because she builds my services. She builds it back either to the client or she takes it away from the, uh, from the cleaning fee. Mm -hmm. So in essence, you know, everything is digested for her and we have technically become her right hand in that, that business. And she's, she's, I think she's 26. She's a, she's, she's young girl starting out. She went to law school and she didn't like it. And now she's into real estate. She does very well. Um, but we become her right hand uh, in terms of, of supporting her business because we can do fast turnarounds with great communication. And we bill her and she never has an issue with what we bill her. She never has an issue with, with our service. And if for whatever reason, something has to, has to be redone or, or she needs something rushed, then we kind of figure out a way like... Today we were talking about it. Uh, um, I picked up, I think it was a, a 10 in the morning, 45 minute drive, pick it up, bring it back to the store by 2 PM, 2 30 PM. It was already delivered at the house, 45 minutes away. Um, and it's, it's a big house. It's a super, super big house. Mm-hmm. So 
So that's where we started with the Airbnbs. And then from that, word started going around because she knows other people that have Airbnbs and they started giving us opportunities. I think we're now up to 15 clients. Um, I think about 25 to 30 properties. And, uh, and we have a small hotel, which we're, we're doing daily service. Mm-hmm. And then eventually, again, put my business hat on and, and started, started kind of figuring out why are you doing you know, daily service? I, I don't mind daily service. I get a daily bill. And again, same thing, put it on a credit card uh, and I charge enough to cover my credit card fee. So to me, that's kind of a cost of doing business. It's completely irrelevant. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was able to, to kind of figure out. And, and then it was, well, we don't have enough inventory. Okay, let's figure out a vendor that can help you. Let, let me help you out with this. And then help her help my client kind of figure out, okay, where can we save you money? If I get to, to offer that as part of my service, a value add that is, that's brought to the client mm-hmm. where I'm not, I'm not trying to figure out how to charge more. I'm trying to figure out how to charge appropriately mm-hmm. and make them comfortable with my service. And at the same time, I can't, I mean, you can do a hotel 30 days, and then 60 days and then 90, but every single day, pickup, delivery, processing, it gets to a point where you're like, listen, we got to figure out a way to spread it out. The only way to do that is to have more inventory. And if you have more inventory, I can probably give you a price break. And then, you know, I can free up resources to grow into another, another client. So from that conversation on, we started doing uh, almost every other day. And then every three days. And then all the extra capacity that I had, I was able to go out and get more clients. Mm-hmm. So about 11 to 15 clients um, is, is what we have now, but we have not yet reached the one year mark for that service. Mm-hmm. So it, it should happen in October. And hopefully from here to October, we should grow by another four or five clients. Um, and, and and what's interesting about Airbnbs is that if if you get to connect with an administrator, you never see them because all you all, if you have the right technology in place, um, they can go online and place the order, or they send you the calendar, and you just go into the system and plug in the dates of the orders, mm-hmm. and that's it. I mean, at the end, it's, it's, if there's a change then there's a change for that order, but then every, everything else in the system. So, you know, we haven't gotten to this, but we, we were doing pickup and delivery with my car. Now we have a truck and we have a driver. So the driver, he knows what to do when he sees the order and, and he sees the packages and he knows he connects with the client and he, he knows what he needs to do. The, the cleaning folks, they know what they need to do. And then on our end, my wife and I, we know exactly what's happened because we have the, the right systems in place. We know exactly what's happening with each order, either coming in or going out. Yeah. Sounds like you've, you've got your systems that you're locking in and are, you're able to, you know, say yes to things and use that to figure out best ways to do it. And then what I really love about what you said is that you're, then you're thinking about, okay, how can I save the client money, but also free our business up to be going to look for more clients, you know? And so, you know, encouraging them to get more inventory or buy smaller sheets or towels or whatever the case may be, it's going to make it easier for them, make it easier for you. And then you can scale it up and make even more money doing it. And once you have those systems down, you know, I mean, sky's the limit, right? You'll be on your way to getting those 10 laundromats and, and being able to process a whole lot That's more. That's the goal. That's the goal. The, the, the funny thing about having the, having a truck with, with your brand on it, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, which we do. We have a small truck. Um, and, and our goal was let's have something small, lower gas bill, lower uh, insurance bill. And if we grow, then we buy bigger. And that, that's, that's the way, at least we think it should be. I was driving through a, an area which tends to be uh, touristy, right? It's a, it's a tourist area. We have a couple of clients there that we do wash and fold with pickup and delivery. And there's this guy that stops me in the middle of the street and says, hey, do you guys do hotels? I'm like, well, 
there's hotels and then there's hotels. I can't do the Marriott down the street, but I can do it. And he's like, no, no, it's only 12, 25 rooms. So it, it took me about probably three weeks to, to connect, which by the way, um, you know, I, I asked him, which is the hotel? And who is the owner? He's like, no, no, don't worry. Let, let me get your information. I'm like, yeah, sure. But just let, just let me know out of curiosity. And he told me the name of the, so the next thing I did is I drove up to the hotel and I uh-huh. asked for the owner and I didn't get the owner, yeah, but at least I went in there. I kind of saw what, what it was all about. Right. Um, Cause you got to make sure that you can, you can at least deliver on, on, on what you think you can do. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and I am very, uh, very cautious about the type of business that I get into because as a new business, you don't want to get a reputation that you, you're not doing the right thing for your client. Right. Um, and that could, that, you know, there, there's a lot of things that, that even if you get over your head with something that you're trying to accomplish, which is basically in our cases, we want to get into the commercial, um, commercial small commercial really uh, to keep our laundromats running. So mm-hmm. we want to get into the small commercial uh, of the business, but we want to be very cautious about how we do it and, and make sure that we're delivering on the promise that we, you know, keeping our promises to the client and we deliver on the quality that we're trying to deliver on. Um, and then we, obviously we make a profit and the clients can afford it. And, 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 and to be honest with you, I, I we, saw it we we saw what the volume was and the first thing that came to my head is okay i'm gonna do it um I'm, I'm, i'll put the resources and we started delivering on a daily basis um and we were getting more income which allows us to do other stuff mm-hmm. but then the first thing that i thought was okay what happens if they get the employees back that they need if they lower the volume that we think project that we can get Mm -hmm. and at the end of the day we're stuck with either an overhead that we can't afford so we got to lay off people um or we've missed opportunities because we've been distracted by this bigger opportunity which seems to be good but how do we protect ourselves from that Mm -hmm. and by doing so we we we've kept the business but we've helped the client kind of figure out how to how to afford our services at the same time okay but we do have this capability how do we c- continue selling and then don't stop the growth of the business just because hey we got this big, big client it's you know they're doing x amount of, of pounds per day which helps us out a lot but what we can't keep you know we can't not focus on the growth of the business that we need to do and and that you know that's a question that that we always ask ourselves is okay we have this great client we're doing very well with them you know what if we don't have them how do we replace that first of all and second of all what if we get more like these where we have to increase you know and then that's a, that's a question the the what if question we use it a lot to kind of figure out you know when we talk about employees when we talk about vendors when we talk about clients you know what if we get more what if we lose them. So how do we plan for that? It helps us a lot. Yeah, I think that's a great question. And, you know, I think taking a second to pause and think, okay, like if I do this, what are the repercussions of it? Good and bad, right? Because the obvious, you know, good results are you're going to have more business. You got a more stable income, at least for the time being. Uh, But, you know, thinking through, well, what if that goes away? And we've, you know, we've extended ourselves too far or, you know, all, I think that's a huge um, thing. I tend to be a little more uh, spontaneous or like, just go, like I get an idea and I'm like, okay, go, go do it. Right. But I think there's a lot of value in taking a beat and, you know, asking that what if question, okay, like, what am I going to miss out on if I do this? You know, and all those questions you mentioned, I think genius, genius questions and something that I think any business owner, you know, can, can take a lesson from, you know, taking a beat when, especially, you know, it's a lot easier to take a beat when there's like an iffy proposition, right? You're like, ah, I mean, maybe, Mm -hmm. but when it's a really good opportunity, 
you know, sometimes even then you need to take a beat or it seems like it, you know, you take a beat and, and ask some of those questions. Yeah, there's nothing, I mean, there's sure. nothing wrong. We have people that come to our store and you know, I'm the first one to try to figure out how to do it. Right. So people come to a store with an opportunity or, or they have something specific that they want to wash. Mm-hmm. And I'm the first one to try to say yes. Um, which, which I get heat, heat from, from my team, you know, they're, you know, but, but at the same time, I've learned that there's, there's things where you just, you just got to either say no, because it's not the correct thing to do. It's going to affect your image. It's going to affect your team. It's going to affect the business. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, what if, uh, has, has kept us from going down probably rabbit holes and and things that we should not really get into. Mm -hmm. Um, and at the same time, uh, it's, it's okay to make mistakes. I mean, that's that's the cool thing about business. It's okay. You have to accept that mistakes will be made uh, by yourself, by your team, by by your clients. Um, how you deal with them is really the essence of of surviving uh, in, in any business. But in in this volatile situation that we're living in right now. Uh, there, there's a lot of variables that nobody really knows uh, that are coming at you uh, in terms of cost, inflation, um, accessibility to talent, um, clients kind of moving around. Uh, there's a lot happening and you just got to keep your eyes open to, to make sure that if you make the mistakes, that those mistakes are, are fixable um, and, and how to deal with them. So that's, to a degree that has helped us a lot with the business because we will make mistakes. And in the past you would think, well, a mistake was that you did wash and fold and you lost an item. You know, you lost a, nowadays a mistake could be you lost a whole order. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And what do you do? Yeah. Um, So, so that's why, again, and going back into having the right systems in place, make sure that that limits your liability and that those mistakes don't happen, but that that you take care of your employees to make sure that that they're doing right for for the client, um, and and that there's leeway to figure out okay if we mess up okay what's the recovery plan because one way or another something something could happen, um, and again I, I mean I was an executive at a brokerage firm which le- deals with risks and liabilities consistently. Mm -hmm. And that has helped me kind of figure out, okay, you can say yes to a lot of things, but there's, there's sometimes you just got to say no, because it's really not, not going to work out. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Or not moving in the right direction or where you're trying to take your business, those kinds of things. Yeah. Awesome. Well, we have a section called down to business. Mm -hmm. That's just a chance for us to kind of get to know your business just a little bit more. So you are in Puerto Rico, right? Yep. And you got the one laundromat so far. Any plans to, you know, is it still too soon to be looking for that second one or where are you at with all that? I think that we, you know, we have that one location, which we're trying <clears throat> to make, you know, right now it's, it's a profitable location. It <clears throat> pays the bills. It pays its own bills. So that's, you know, that's the best, that's the best way to kind of, kind right. of uh, explain it, you know, Hey, if it pays the bills, it's doing well. Um, can we get more out of it? Yes, we can. And yeah. that's, that's what we're working towards. And then eventually it'll get to a place where the physical limitations of the location in terms of the amount of machines and the amount of, of processing power, they will get to a limit. And then we got to move on. We got to figure out um, our goal is really to keep that location and then open up a different location. Mm-hmm. Now, th- there's one thing that we do offer, which is from a business perspective and not necessarily from the laundromat perspective, but because we offer pickup and delivery, the clients that we cater to can opt to use dry cleaning services through us. Mm-hmm. So within our brand, they get dry cleaning, they get laundry, and they get home you know, uh, washing of home, home items, home, home goods, um, which is the beddings and, uh, you know, uh, towels, towels, bathroom rugs, curtains and stuff like that. Um, but, 
but a very small sliver of the of the services that we offer is the dry cleaning portion, which we our goal is to to help the client just kind of figure out, okay, if I have one vendor for all of this and take it all and do it. And then we outsource most of the dry cleaning. Now, to be honest with you, mo- most of the items that we dry clean, they're 90% uh, uh, you're able to wash them in water. So we wash them. So we take care of the stains. We take care of the inventory. We, you know, we take care of, of the actual item. We just don't press it. We take it somewhere else. They do the pressing for us. They do uh, next day service. So we are able to offer our dry cleaning clients 48 hour service on most items and whatever we can't dry clean because it is a dry clean only item, then they do it for us. We make a small profit, but we were able to service the client that never comes to us, but we can get to go to them. Mm-hmm. We can, we can, we can expand a little bit on the, on the, on the level of service. That's why sometimes when we explain our business, we call it a laundry service and we don't mm-hmm. focus necessarily on the laundromat because it's not a level of service that they will be using. Uh, n- not necessarily. Uh, we do get quite a few clients that their washers and dryers uh, are broken for whatever reason. It's happening more and more often because of the type of machines that are being sold in the market nowadays. And they find our place to be clean, uh, attended, you know, a different experience. So they come in, they wash, they stay with us probably for about a month when they get their machines uh, uh, fixed. And then when they leave, they had a good experience. So then our goal is to keep the client by offering another type of service, which is a washing and pressing, which instead of them going to another dry cleaner, they, they keep coming to us and we make the money on the back end, uh, even if it's a small profit, but at least we keep the client consistently coming which at the end of the day, one of the first things that we thought about this type of business is the recurring revenue that happens because people tend to wash their clothes more than once, of course. Yeah. So yeah, awesome. our goal, uh, our goal is to, to use the same model, but in different geographical locations within actually within the same level of the same service area that we have now. Mm-hmm. So in other words, there will come a time where when the physical limitations of the store, there's just so much that I can process that we will be able to, to, we will need to open a different store. I've always said that my goal is to have 10 stores. My wife thinks I'm crazy and she's probably (laughs) right. So we have to take one at a time. We've already looked at two locations. I've already looked at two locations for what could possibly be the next store. Um, there are opportunities out there. Um, but again, it's, it's one of those things that uh, you have to be ready. You know, you know how they say, be careful what you ask for. Yep. <laughs> you gotta be ready. You gotta be ready because when you make that move, there's a, there's a high probability that, that, that our next door is a current location that we would just have to redo and rebrand. And because of what's happening in the marketplace, a lot of a lot of people going into the business, but then there's a lot of people going out. So, mm-hmm. so at the same time, it gives us an opportunity to kind of make offers and, and make deals. And and what I've always thought is, okay, I like the location. If the guy says no, I'll just build next door and do my own thing. Right? There's there's the Walgreens and CVS situation where you get a Walgreens and a CVS right in front of each other. They both coexist, and it's good for competition. It's good. So I've always thought that. I don't, if I can't buy him out, then I'll just build nearby and, and compete and just do my own thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, for your walk-in self-service customers, how much is it costing in Puerto Rico to do laundry? So, so we're on the, on a little bit of a, on the higher end of the spectrum in terms of pricing. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a little bit more about the, the layout we have. We, we currently have 20, 20 pound, I mean, eight 20 pound machines. Mm-hmm. Um, we have eight 40 pound machines and then we have two 60 pound machines. Now, believe it or not, in, in, in our area, we are the only ones with 60 pound machines and we have, we only have two. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, the machines are all uh, soft mount machines, which I know it's not the most uh, uh, prevalent in, the, in, the, in different marketplaces. Mm-hmm. We did opt for 
continental soft mount machines because of the durability and what we were able to see the application of, of that type of machine in another place within Puerto Rico and within hotels within Puerto Rico. So we were able to, to physically understand and talk to people that have used the machines. Um, there is a dry cleaning chain that uses the 40 pound soft mount machine and they have about 60 or 70 of those machines in the island. Um, so we're using the same vendor. Um, and, and, and so far, it's, it's amazing what we've been able to get from those machines. First of all, because they're soft mount, uh, they have high RPMs in the, in the spin. So they get to 400 Gs. And we're able to offer our clients 24-minute 24 24 wash and 30-minute dry time. So you can you know, wash and dry in an hour or less. So the 20 pound machines are at $3.95, $3.95. The next one over, which is 40 pounds is Mm $6.95. And the 60 pounds are $9.95. Now we know that the $9.95 might be on the low end and the 20 might be on the high end. And and one of the things that we're trying to drive people is to to just use the higher higher capacity machines, uh, basically because they're, 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 they're better for, for washing. It's, it's a better machine, better construction and better uh, water management, electricity management. Um, and the experience for the client at the end of the cycle is much better. I mean, the, mm-hmm. the, the end product, the, the washing of their clothes is much better. Um, on, the dry, on the dryers, uh, we do full cycle pricing. So in other words, you pay $6.95 and you pay $3.50 for half an hour. Uh, which is about 35 cents per minute. Um, actually, no, it's 35 cents per three minutes. And it's 350 for half an hour on the 30 pound machines. We have 30 pounds and we have 45 pound uh, dryers and they're stacked dryers. Uh, they're branded Continental, but there's probably the same that, that other brands use. Um, so basically a 40 pound, 40 pound machine of washer Paired with a dryer, it's 1050 for the cycle. <laughs> and then what we try to offer our client is listen, it's 1050, uh, 1045, actually, 1045, but it's it's a guaranteed price. Meaning that if you follow our instructions, and that's why I love that we're attended, which means that my attendants really take care of the clients, mm-hmm. then they come from another store, which might be a dollar fifty the washer. And they're paying three ninety five with me, but when we do the math, probably the size of the machine, they need to use two or three to fit what we can do on the forty, mm-hmm. um, or even on the sixty. So when you do the math, yes, you might be paying a dollar more per cycle, or maybe two dollars more, but they get to leave probably one or two hours earlier, and they get a better wash. And a better experience overall. I mean, and, and and we have a lot of clients that come to us from buildings that have lawn, uh, uh, in-house laundry, mm-hmm. um, which are vended. But because the type of the machines that are in those buildings is lower lower end machines, they come to us and they pay a higher price, but they get a, a faster wash. They can wash more. And and it's a better better experience overall. Um, so again, three ninety five, six ninety five, nine ninety five for the washers, and then three fifty for the dryers, and five dollars for the forty five pound uh, dryer for thirty minutes. So these are preset thirty minutes um, on both. So the idea is that uh, you know we don't have people adding more minutes. Mm-hmm. Because it's not dry. The idea is we want you in and out as fast as possible. From our from our perspective, in and out fast, so we can fit more people in. But a, but on their perspective, it's I don't want to waste time being here. Yeah. So Perfect. so the design of the of the business, it's you know the 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 typical express laundromat, which is you go in and out fast. And you have the type of equipment to support that. Um, now there's, there's some other perks that we offer our clients because we're card, um, then the, the client can use their app 
um, to activate the machines, to know when the cycle is up, when there's machines available. So if they're home, they can be on their phone. If there's machines available before coming in. And the other thing that we, that we do, which uh, I'm sure that if you do a poll, 50% of people watching will say, I would never do that. And the other 50% will go like, eh, maybe I can try to do that. But we do offer the client the capability of, hey, if you put the wash, we'll dry it, we'll fold it for you for a fee, and then you can pick it up later on. So it's it's kind of a hybrid wash and fold. Mm-hmm. But what happens is that our location is next to a supermarket. And the idea is while you're in the supermarket, just leave your clothes here and we'll take care of the rest. And then what happens is we always get the question, well, okay, but how much is it if I just leave it and, and you guys do it all? Well, that's per pound. So it's $1.49 40, per pound. And if we do the math, you would pay $5 more. Okay, so five dollars more, or ten dollars more, or twenty dollars more. I'll my time's worth it. So, so you get to convert more people um, from the regular laundromat service when they do everything themselves, but they get the perks of oh, okay. But there's a supermarket next door. There's a little restaurant next door. Can I leave and go home and come back? Yeah, you can do those things with us. You can do it because we're attended. We know what orders are in in every machine right. and we offer the client the option, even if it's for a small fee, but we offer the, the client the option of us taking care of everything. And eventually those clients get converted to, um, to wash and fold. Smart. I like it. Uh, what does it cost for, uh, do you charge per pound for pickup and delivery? Yes, we do. It's a dollar 49. Everything is a dollar 49 except the Airbnbs at a dollar 50. Um, and oh, then you're really Airbnb, gouging those guys. Yeah, extra penny. So, yeah, extra penny. <laughs> here, here's, here's what happens with that. It's a dollar fifty for the Airbnb, it's a dollar forty-nine. And I'm trying to kind of standardize everything and just have it the same, even if it's a penny difference, just have right. it really the same. Because the owner sometimes happens that the owners of the Airbnb, they 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 send us their clothes, personal clothes. So we do those at a dollar forty nine, and then everything else is a dollar fifty. So sometimes, if they look at the invoice, it's like, "Why is this?" I'm like, "Well, that's what it is." Yeah, <laughs> you got your Airbnb. You're making money out of it. The other one is just a personal expense. So I'll give you a penny, a penny less. Um, <laughs> I like it. But but the Airbnbs we do, if we do volume discounts or we do uh, per bag costs. Which we've, we've, we're testing, just kind of figure out if it's if it's feasible, economically feasible for us. And then we also do so we do per pound, per bag, or a monthly flat rate. Oh, interesting! Um, like a subscription, the, basically. Subscription, yeah. So the idea is you get to wash as much as you want, as much as you want, um, within certain parameters for X dollars a month. So mm-hmm. the, the right way of doing it is, listen, I looked at all your invoices for the past six months. Your average is, I don't know, 200 bucks a month or 225 a month. What if we do 199 every month, regardless of how much volume you have? And then we share the risk. Um, and then the, the parameters are, don't add more you know, inventory that you already have. Because we, we anyway know more or less how much pounds you need to process. So in other words, if you go down in terms of pounds, it's irrelevant to us because we're going to make more money. If you add more, then there's a threshold where it jumps from 199 to 299, for example. Mm-hmm. Um, but but we we've, we've done that with a couple of clients, and it, it kind of it works for them. Uh, it kind of works for us so far. It's it's working okay. Um, but sometimes what happens is that they accumulate and then we do just one service a month. Right. And that's it. And then, but we're, we're, we're testing it out. We're testing it out. It, it, it works, but we have to test it out. Um, cause it's not as easy as just, you know, weigh it and whatever it is we charge and that's it. Right. Um, but it's, it's straightforward. Pricing is very simple. Uh, we do, we do price increase annually. So far, we 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 from 2020 to 2021, we did a price increase, uh, basically in most categories. Mm-hmm. So, in other words, 
we didn't uh, we actually did not price increase on the washers we did price increase on the dryers we went from 275 to 350 mm. and the wash and fold went from when we started out we were trying to get clients so we were at 99 cents per pound we went to 125 and then to 149 and 149 is kind of a sweet spot where you know we have competitors that do three dollars per pound uh, but but the ones who do three dollars per pound their idea is look if you want me to do it you pay for it uh but if if i don't do it that's fine i don't mm -hmm. you know that it doesn't drive my business right. um it does drive ours so at 149 or 150 it works and and i think that you know we might see an increase uh, gas prices has gone, have gone up dramatically in one year. Yes. Amazing uh, for us, a hundred and almost 115%. So it's crazy, it's crazy. Yeah. crazy. Um, but that's it. I mean, everything else that we price out is, uh, we have what's called a soap bar. So the idea is, you know, because we have a, a supermarket next door, they sell soap. I mean, they sell detergents, all type of detergents. We don't make a lot of money on that. So what we did is we offer most detergents, most readily available commercial uh, or consumer-based detergents. Most of them are at the store at the client's convenience per machine. Mm. So, so they're pre, there's a, it's, it's uh, they're pre-measured basically. Uh, each machine has a specific measurement that they use and we price it out. So most clients, the first time they come, they come with all their, all their uh, detergents and eventually they figure out, I don't want to buy more detergents. I'll just buy it for you because it's whatever, 50 cents more, if it's a dollar more per machine, it's irrelevant. To, uh, mm -hmm. it, it just, it just makes sense. Um, and then on the, on the card side, if the client uses our card, then they do get a 5% discount based on volume. Uh, that's, that's on an ongoing basis. So every time they charge every dollar, they get five points. When they get the 500 points, which is a hundred dollars, they get $5 back. Um, and that kind of works in the mission that, that, you know, the equipment takes care of everything. The software takes care of everything. The client just needs to have their card or they need to have their app paired up with a card to, to, to use the, the, the service. And yeah. it works out. Awesome. Awesome. Well, it sounds like you got a good system that you've got already set up and you're, you know, I like the fact that you're experimenting with stuff and, and trying new things and trying new ways of doing things, new payment models and all that. And I think that that is kind of a recipe for success, right? Having that mindset that you have trying to offer a lot of value and a lot of quality to your customers and continually testing things and trying to see what yeah. works the best. It's awesome. Well, we got a section called Secret Sauce. Listen up, it's the Secret Sauce. And Secret Sauce is just, hey, what advice do you have for current laundromat owners? Maybe something they could try or implement in their business to help them, you know, take their business up to the next sure. level. So, so the Secret Sauce in our case, and I can only speak to, to what we have focused on, is, is actually client service. So client service is, is kind of thrown around really generously in, in almost every industry, right? So, so a lot of businesses, oh, every, the quality is in the service. But in essence, what does that mean? So we, we kind of, we, 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 did, we did what we, what my wife and I, think is what it should be. There has to be a definition that we can teach our, our employees. Mm -hmm. And, and it's based on three things. So the first one is, and, and there's very basic three things, by the way. Um, but, but the idea is, look, if we are an attended laundromat, it means to the client that number one, they get a, they got, they have to have, they got to get a warm welcome. I mean, you go to a restaurant, you go to anywhere where service is the centerpiece of whatever it is that they're offering, or even if it's retail, you go to a store. And if somebody at the store acknowledges that you came in and they, they say, hey, good morning, 
Hey, good afternoon. Hey, how can I help you? That in itself makes a big differentiator uh, mm-hmm. from any other business. <clears throat> and, and again, it doesn't have to be laundromat. It could be, again, a, a restaurant, a shoe store, uh, you know, any retail, uh, a retail or service-based uh, um, uh, uh, place that you go to as a person. Clients love to be acknowledged. And if you make the, your client a centerpiece, because it is the centerpiece of whatever it is that you're offering, then that first thing basically is just, just to get a warm welcome. It's a basic thing a lot of people miss. Mm-hmm. The second thing is anticipate what your client needs. Anticipate, look, figure out why are they coming and how is that going to happen? Now, you do get recurring clients. So you do get people that you know what's going to happen with them, how they like to wash their clothes, what's the machine that they like, uh, what detergents they like. But those are things that you can anticipate. How do you anticipate a client, a new client that comes in? Ask the question, Mm -hmm. how can I help you? Are you going to wash or are you going to leave it? Or are you going to wash it? Perfect. Do you have detergent? I'm not sure I'm going to go to the supermarket and buy some. Don't worry, because we here we have, we have this brand and this brand and this brand and this brand. We have all the brands and, and I've spoken to other laundromat owners and they're like, we don't buy all the brands. We just buy the cheapest brand because that's what the clients are willing to pay for. I'm like, well, I don't know. I buy them all and I sell all of them. Turns out that I sell them all and I mm-hmm. got to keep buying. Oh, but some of them are more expensive than others. Yes, that is completely true. And we just average out. We sell them all at the same price and we make money on some and we make less money on some others but we make money on all of them. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, it's because we're anticipating the needs of the clients. So the client comes in, anticipate, do you need a bag to take it out? Do you need a uh, detergent? Do you need softener? Do you need uh, whatever it is that you need? We basically have it all. And anything and everything that a client could buy to, to wash their clothes, we might have it in stock, you know, spray and wash, uh, OxyClean, um, vinegar, uh, you know, uh, arm and hammer in actual real baking powder. And we have it all because clients come and ask, Hey, by the way, do you have this? Yes, we do. And then it could be a dollar more. It could be free. And that's because a 10 cent item that yes, you could make 90 cents profit. But the goodwill that you generate with your client just by saying, hey, this plastic bag that you're asking me, which I could charge you a quarter for, instead of nickel and diming your client, raise your prices and give them the bag for free. Because mm-hmm. it's one bag. And I might give out four bags a day. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Maybe. And the bag is worth probably three cents. Maybe. So... So the second item is anticipate what your client needs and just be ready for it. And then the third item, which is the the most simplest item, which a lot of companies just completely miss, is make sure that the client, when they leave, you say, hey, thank you for coming. Can I help you with the bag? Can I take it to the car? You know, did we do a good job? Is it dry? You know, is, is your clothes dry? It's a question we always ask uh, all of our clients and most clients, you know, 99%. Yes, it's, it's dry. It's great. It works. And then, you know, once you build that rapport with your client, then you can ask, Hey, do you mind giving us a review in, in whatever in Google or in Facebook or how'd you find this? Oh, I did a Google search. Hey, do you mind giving us a review in Google? Cause other clients might be looking for your services. And if you had a good experience, can you, so right now, as of today, a year and a half later, since we started, all of our reviews in, in Google are five stars. All of our reviews in Facebook are five stars. Because we, ca- we catch, if something went wrong, we catch it in the moment. Because we acknowledge that the client came in, mm-hmm. we anticipated what their needs are, and, and we gave them a warm goodbye and kind of closed the loop with their with with mm-hmm. whatever it is that they came to do with us because we do those three things at any at any moment of those three interactions the client can say hey something's not right 
hey, I activated because this could happen. I activated the dryer twice. So instead of paying for 30 minutes, I paid for an hour, but I don't need an hour. Don't worry. I'll refund. I'll put back 350 in your card. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't take two minutes to do it. Um, yeah, but what do you do with the other half hour? Whatever. We just turn off the machine and the clock will keep on going. Don't worry about that. Just use what you need. So, so service is the secret sauce. Granted, it, it does help that you have the infrastructure to support the level of service that you're trying to provide. Mm -hmm. But if you think of those three things, and, and by the way, these are three things that I, that I stole from somewhere else. It's not, we didn't, you know, we are not recreating the wheel. The wheel was there. We just took it from another industry and we put it in place in an industry that needs service. But the definition of service was what? So we distilled it to do three interactions. So, Here's an example of what happens when a client and when a client comes in and our attendants are doing wash and fold. The instructions are you stop what you're doing and you go and attend the client. Oh, but what happens with the wash and fold order? It, 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 it that get, gets delayed. Well, you know what? We have to learn to build time in between the processing of the wash and fold order to make sure that the client that does come in and is physically in our store, that they get the support that they need, because that's the client that's going to, uh, you know, it's the word of mouth is going to do, give you the reviews is going to say something positive about your business because of the interaction that they had with you. So we're very jealous about making sure that our employees are attending to the clients that are on the floor versus only doing wash and fold, mm -hmm. which is which is really what pays their salary. Mm -hmm. But we build timing into the wash and fold orders to make sure that there's ample space for them to kind of veer off a little bit and say, okay, I'm going to leave this here, take care of a client and then come back. Basically what's happened is we've hired additional resources just to make sure that the, 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 the folding happens Folding and packaging is the, is the most manual piece of it. Mm -hmm. So folding and, and packaging happens while somebody is attending to the client. But when we started, we couldn't do that. We couldn't afford it. Uh, we've gotten to a, a, a bigger scale where we now can afford to have an employee stop what they're doing, attend to a client, take care of those three things, and then and then come back. And, and it's funny because uh, when was it? I think it was last night. Last night, my wife and I were there at the store uh, closing up and, and this lady whom I've seen several times, she says, listen, Louise, I just wanted to, to tell you and your wife that, uh, that, that congratulations on keeping up with the promise or with the concept of serving the client. Because at the beginning, a lot of people do that because the owners are there and everybody's wanting to, to take care of, of the business. But Sometimes it doesn't last because the owners, they, they start doing something else. They start delegating. And that item related, specifically related to, to attending to that client gets missed. And that's why we simplified it. Look, it's three things. You got to do these three things. If you do mm -hmm. these three things consistently, and by the way, within those three things, if something goes wrong, call me or call my wife. Because again, I go back to technology. I can credit a client. I can start a machine in my house. I can go into the system. I can view the balance of a, of a card. Or if something went wrong with a credit card, I can go in and figure out what went wrong and either credit back, process an order, start a machine. I can do all of that from home. The only thing I can't do is physically put stuff into the machine and get them started. But everything else uh, we can, we can do remotely by the way. And we only use two apps for that. We use uh, a specific app for the, for, for controlling the machines and the card system and then the POS and it's interconnected. So I can, mm -hmm. you know, if a, if a client has balance, I can do a ticket from home and, and I, I've actually done, orders from home, call the store and say, Hey, can you print the client and then a receipt 
just for them to have a paper receipt, which by the way, all the receipts they get, the clients get via text anyway to their phones. So, so it, it, it does help to have the infrastructure and the technology, but then there's a mindset behind it where the, you, you got to simplify a little bit of, of what you're trying to do with the idea that, hey, I distilled three definitions of, 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 of what service to us looks like. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what we have to teach our every new employee. What we have to teach everybody. Everybody has to be aware that those are the three things that we got to do. And obviously, then you got to drill down on each and every one of them to make sure that that there's support, that there's a way to support those three things. Yeah. Yeah. That was awesome. I love, love, love that. And I think that that is so powerful and stuff like that, that, I mean, it makes your business a business, right? It makes mm -hmm. you, you're operating on a professional level at that point when you are keeping those things in mind, you're focusing on those, you're staying consistent with those, you're continually reinforcing, you know, those three rules or principles um, that you're trying to instill into your attendance, you're training that way. And that's what takes the business to the next level and will allow you to, you know, scale it into as big of a business as you want it to become yeah. um, at that point, I think. So I love that. That was, that was, I will classify that as an epic <laughs> secret sauce uh, right there. I love that. Uh, well, we have another section called pro tips. Pro tips. And yep. pro tips is for those who are looking to buy their first laundromat. Do you have any advice for anyone trying to buy their first laundromat or start their first laundry service? Yeah. I, I think that there's the, the, the biggest uh, advice I could give them is, is do your research and, and, you know, question a little bit of what you get out there in the market. That there's there's a lot of information out there. Uh, this this same podcast has helped me out. There, there's a great uh, there's a lot of great information in it. Um, uh, the industry associations are very good, and there are some professionals out there that know what they're talking about. Um, but you got to you got to figure out that there's some things about this industry which are probably unspoken and or not thought about uh, extensively. So that's, that's why disruption is happening. That's why there are people in the industry coming in and just doing different, probably to get the same result, right? Everybody wants to get a shirt washed. Mm -hmm. you know, it's as simple as that. But how you get to that, right? Think, think of, of, of Blockbuster, right? Uh, Blockbuster uh, uh, was dominant. They dominated uh, the consumer market for watching movies at home. They mm -hmm. don't exist anymore. The end result is the same. Watch a movie at home. Mm -hmm. Netflix came in. They disrupted the market. Mm -hmm. and, and it's amazing when you, when you see that these, you know, either technology companies and or uh, 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 investors are coming in to try to redo the industry. Mm -hmm. There's one thing interesting about this industry, and there's very few components that are proprietary. Very few, very few. The other thing is there's very few brands out there that are dominant in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. and, and there's, there's not a McDonald's of, of laundromats. I mean, right. I haven't seen it yet. There's, there's not that one that you would say, Hey, here's, here's the, uh, um, how do you say this? Here's the uh, what's what's it called? I'm sorry, what's it like called? Franchise. Uh, the franchise. The franchise. Yeah. Right. right. So this is the one franchise to buy. But there's a lot of franchises out there, mm -hmm. and and some of them have come here to Puerto Rico to my market, and some of them have offered me, and I haven't seen yet one that I would say, oh, that's the one. That's the one that I'm willing to pay the upfront cost and the revenue on the back end continuously mm -hmm. um, because it's, it, it's not out there yet. It's not. So there are brand names that compete in certain marketplaces. There are manufacturers getting into creating their own locations um, just to, you know, obviously to put more machines out there because there's some, there's some, some people probably not us, right? Probably we are the ones who would take 
those brands to another level, mm-hmm. but the investors are really not out there yet. Um, so whoever's trying to get into the game, it's not about putting a machine and collecting quarters. That train left a long time ago. Mm-hmm. I mean, ask the toll collector if that train is there or not. There are no <laughs> toll collectors. Right. It doesn't exist anymore. Yep. Go to any parking space. Who's the attendant that is cashing your, ch- your, your ticket to le- let you out? It's a machine. Machine, yep. So, so whoever is wanting to get into the industry, there, are, there is a lot of technology out there. There are some key players in the technology field, some of them that are coming in new, some of them that are already established, that are key players that, that connected or put together can allow you to have a business, even as an investor, mm-hmm. that al- allows you to grow. And even if you have a small laundromat in a small town with, with whatever, 10 machines, like on the, on the West coast of the Island, we have a, uh, we have a, a, a laundry, a laundromat. And I think I have six machines and, and six washers and six dryers and they couldn't afford to buy high end. So they bought, but they bought what they could buy for that marketplace. And they're doing very, very well. Now, now the guy who bought it, based on his experience and based on his vision, that's what he wants. Perfect. Then invest in that. Mm -hmm. You want 10 stores and you want, you know, all of, all of the things that I've talked about so far, that's me. That's what I want to do because, you know, I, I kind of retired from what I was doing before, but I still have ways to go. uh, And same as my wife. And hopefully, you know, we get to, to a, to a place where, it, it's it's a much bigger business, diversified, and, and a bunch of other stuff going on. It, it, it can get as complicated as you want it to get. Mm-hmm. So the biggest advice I can give you is figure out what you want and then do your homework. And once you decide, find a good vendor, find a good dealer, find a good business partner that can help you get to where you want to get to, somebody that you can call. And if you're doing it just as an investment, you know, make sure that, you know, some, something I, I read and heard and saw uh, many, many, many times about the laundry, laundromat industry is it's not necessarily the type of business that you're going to let, let your brother-in-law run because somebody's going to be skimming off somewhere. Mm-hmm. Yes, that could happen with a pizza place. It could happen with a, a, a gas station. It can happen with any business. Put the controls in place and make sure that it's run sound and you get the reports. Like one, one of the richest men in the world, um, Warren Buffett, he buys companies, he puts a CEO in place and he leaves them run. That's it. He, they talk once a year mm-hmm. and he trusts his employees. Something goes wrong. The guy is out. He brings somebody else in. Obviously, we're not at that level. This is not the type of business uh, you know, like, like I always tell my, my employees, look, every dollar counts, every penny counts, everything counts. So if we're doing it, we're do- if we're going to lose something, we lose it in favor of the client. We don't lose it in, in favor of us losing our shirt, trying to, you know, uh, reach a goal. And then we we are making the wrong decisions. Uh, but whoever wants to get into this industry, it's a beautiful industry, by the way, it's an industry that you can affect positively, uh, the, the communities where you're, where you're physically there. I mean, we, we've, we've done a lot of, a lot of work, uh, charity work for, uh, within the community. Um, and we do it graciously. We do it for the, in favor of the community and it builds, you know, it builds trust and it builds value where we're at, um, but those are things that you got to figure out. If that's where you want to go, then do your research, connect with the folks that really know about it and, and go ahead. It's, it's a great industry. Yeah. Love that. I think that's great. Uh, great pro tips, great examples in there. And uh, man, if you're looking to buy your first laundromat, you know, maybe re-listen to that section because it was uh, it's just really solid solid advice, uh, for anybody trying to buy their first laundromat and particularly finding out, or, you know, you may not know right away, but doing enough of your research to figure out what you want, what kind of business do you want to have? Yep. Um, cause it, it, there, I mean, one of the beauties of this industry is it can be 
you know, a flex time investment where you kind of run it on the side and it could be a full-time gig and you can scale it up pretty big if you want. So um, find out where you are on that scale and, uh, and then go after that. So I love that. Uh, we have another section called recommended resources. Do you have any resources that you would recommend to, uh, to people to help them grow their businesses or themselves personally? Yeah. I mean, there's, there's two resources that I can, that I can recommend bl- blindly. Uh, this podcast has a lot of great uh, guests uh, and it does have a lot of great uh, information. Um, there's also the CLA. Um, you know, the, the coin launder association mm-hmm. from their perspective, they've done a lot for the industry. And, and I think that they, you know, it, it's an area where you can, where you can connect another resource that we used because we saw it from the manufacturer's perspective is the actual manufacturer's websites done correctly, which most of them are, they do provide uh, information that you can use but you got to filter it, right? Everybody's trying to sell their, their piece of the, of the, of the idea. Um, but if you filter it correctly, you can get uh, more or less how, how to make sure that, that you have the information that you need. Um, and then there are some forums on Facebook, uh, which are, which are very good. Um, I just joined, uh, what is it? The uh, laundromat millionaire group which is a growing group uh and 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 that's you know that's one where where you can connect with other peers um what's interesting about those groups in facebook is what i've seen so far and i think i I, i've joined like three or four is there's a genuine interest to help i mean there's genuinely people out there asking you know, good questions and getting support from those questions and the support that they're getting generally is very good. Everybody has their bias, right? Everybody is seeing the question through their eyes and what they would do. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's the value that those groups offer. Um, They're very respectful. They're very knowledgeable. And there's a lot of people out there with a lot of years of experience. And and it's it's very worthwhile to join um, and, and, and have them as a backup. Now, again, at the end of the day, you know, look at it through your eyes, look at it through your filters, and then figure out what really you want to do and how that takes you to the next level. But those resources are really good. This podcast... Um, the laundromat millionaire, the CLA, and then the other forums that are out there. Yeah. And the manufacturer's websites. Yeah. The manufacturer's website. And I'll put links to everything I could put links to in the show notes or on the, uh, if you're on YouTube down below in the description. So if you want to go check any of those out, the, uh, the CLA, the podcast, the, probably won't put each manufacturer's website, right. but you can Google those and the laundromat millionaire Facebook group I'll put on there too. Uh, Luis, this has been an incredible, incredible episode. Thank you so much. I know you took, you know, some time. We had a power outage in the middle of this thing yeah, and you jumped back <laughs> on. Really, really appreciate you coming on just to share your experience, your wisdom, your knowledge. And I think most importantly, your mindset uh, that you have when you're approaching this business. I think there's a lot that most of us can learn um, just from your mindset, let alone all the wisdom that you shared. So man, really, really appreciate you generously offering your time. The last question I have for you is if people are resonating with some of these things that you're saying, what's the best way they can contact you? Sure. Uh, Email is one. Uh, 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 my, my email is kind of long, but it's L from Luis. L, I, I have the luxury of deleting my name from the, from the email. Just L. <laughs> Just L. That's how you L, know you've made it. You, right. You've boiled yourself down to a letter. That's all. To a letter. I like that. <laughs> it's L at cleanventuresllc.com. Okay. Uh, that's kind of the easiest to email. If, if you want to reach our business through the, the thing about our business is the name is in Spanish. So sometimes it's a little bit uh, complicated. I, I know that you can add the links down, uh, down mm-hmm. below, but on Facebook, it's uh, ciudadlondromax.com. And on Instagram, it's the same thing. Ciudadlondromax.com. 
And I think that we are actually on, well, we, we just opened a TikTok account. Oh, we're not good at that, but we opened it just to get That's that. That's what I was hoping to hear. Yeah. We, we have our flag is already there. And I think we have three videos on there, um, which you can get a, a little bit of a gist. And, that, and that's, uh, that's actually Laundromax, uh, Laundromax itself. Uh, same thing with Twitter. Twitter is Laundromax uh, only, I think. No, actually, Twitter is City Laundromax. Um, we're building within our, uh, within our website, an English version of the website because we have English speaking folks in Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we're catering to that market as well. So, so yeah, uh, email is easier. Uh, the rest is just a business, uh, uh, out there, um, uh, city, uh, city laundromax.com or ciudad laundromax.com. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much again. This was an incredible, incredible episode. And uh, man, I cannot wait to hear more as you continue to expand and grow. And I'd be curious to see not if, but how long it takes you to get to your goal <laughs> of 10 laundromats. And then I want to have your wife on and ask her who's crazy now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks, man. Appreciate it. And uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Thank you so much. What a cool episode with Luis. So much good information and a lot of fun. I mean, I loved that conversation. And if you remember every week, I tell you, pick one thing to put it into action. Action is what takes us where we want to go. Not just learning, learn something, then put it into action. So pick something. What are you going to put into action? Maybe head over to the forums, share what you're putting into action this week. For me, the, my big takeaway, I mean, there's a lot to take away. All right. There was a lot to take away and I'm sure it's going to work its way into what I'm doing and how I'm doing things. Uh, but the one thing I really want to focus on uh, based off what he was talking about, he's talking about those leadership what do you call them? The client service rules or principles. Um, and I think we were talking after and he said he, he got those from the Ritz Carlton Leadership Center, which was really cool. Um, I'll put a link to the Ritz Carlton Leadership Center if you want to check out some more of that. Um, but just as a quick reminder, um, warm welcome and anticipate your client's needs and make sure that you are attentive uh, to the clients when they leave and ask for a review. I loved those three or four uh, principles that he's utilizing in his laundromat and training his employees to use. I love that. I'm going to try to figure out a way to incorporate those into what I'm doing with my laundromats and what I'm doing here. The laundromat resource everywhere, man, everywhere. So good. Taking care of your people is the most important thing, right? So love that. Thank you, Luis, for that. And Ritz Carlton, thank you for that. Uh, but guys, so cool. Thank you so much for joining us. Cannot wait. See you guys at the live Q&A on Wednesday with Dave Mins. We'll see you on the webinar with Mike Kelly on Thursday. We'll be all over YouTube. We got the blog post coming out, uh, sponsored by Sense on Thursday also. And then we'll be back here with a new episode of the podcast next Tuesday. All right. This is Jordan with the Laundromat Resource Podcast and laundromatresource.com. See you wherever we see you. Peace.